Baljeet Kaur, give me your overview of the market, please. Well, Islamic finance has grown at an annual growth rate of 15% um, in the last four years. We're looking at uh, an industry that uh, has seen a growth of assets of about a trillion dollars. Our conservative estimate is for the industry to grow to $1.6 trillion by 2020. So really, the impetus for growth is coming from um, vast uh, developments in emerging markets, a huge demand for Islamic um, instruments. Um, the vast liquidity that is very still available in emerging markets, uh, predominantly in the Middle East uh, and in emerging Asia. Uh, and also uh, a move uh, towards ethical financing post-crisis, where we've seen a lot of demand uh, for Islamic instruments. Um, and so we're seeing an industry that is uh, fairly robust um, in its uh, growth trajectory, and it's something we're very positive about. Um, you talked about an industry that's growing at, at the rate of 15% per annum? That's right. Yes. It's an amazing figure. It is, yes, absolutely. Especially since it's starting from a very low base, and really the industry has only been fundamentally around the last decade or so. Um, and also, the last decade has been fueled by economic prosperity, uh, fundamentally in emerging markets. So this growth rate is a very conservative growth rate. Um, we anticipate that once global economies normalize, that growth could actually perpetuate to about 20 to 21 percent. And that is on the back um, of a very resilient capital market. The growth of uh, the Sukuk market, which is uh, uh, similar to Islamic bonds, the growth of high net worth individuals uh, demanding more and more Islamic assets, as well as the growth of a broader retail Islamic market, which will also include uh, takaful or Islamic insurance. One of the questions during the course of the discussion was about the, the, the pre and post uh, financial crisis. And it was suggested that some economists are saying that actually uh, more attention should be paid to the Islamic system, the is Islamic banking, because Islamic banking had fewer problems and, and the crisis might not have occurred. That's right, absolutely. In fact, it's very, very interesting thesis. Um, just going back, uh, looking at how Islamic institutions evolved, uh, at the onset of the crisis, uh, Islamic institutions were very much insulated um, from, from the first, uh, first fall-on effects of the crisis, fundamentally because Sharia uh, financing disallows investments uh, into a debt that trades on debt. Uh, and so collateralized debt obligations, collateralized loan obligations, a lot of derivatives are basically not permitted within the Sharia context. And so within that framework, Islamic institutions were fairly insulated from the onset of the crisis. Nevertheless, Islamic finance does not exist in a vacuum. It exists within the broader global financial architecture, and that includes the conventional uh, framework. And so when global economies uh, felt the real crunch from the crisis, and the real economy started to get impacted, um, valuations of assets uh, took a drastic uh, dip. Um, we saw the crisis taking a more sinister uh, uh, outlook um, when investments, consumptions and so on failed. And so by virtue of that, uh, Islamic assets were also impacted. Nevertheless, an interesting point to note here uh, is that if you look at Sharia financing uh, in its purest form, in its most fundamental form, which disallows um, um, interest or usury, which disallows investments into highly speculative investments and assets. This really is a very interesting financial mechanism that takes on a, a very ethical twist, uh, but at the same time provides stable long-term um, partnership type of returns. Um, so it's an industry that's, that's growing, uh, that's gaining a lot of momentum, uh, especially in emerging markets where infrastructure financing, for instance, is taking a very Islamic-led uh, approach. Uh, and so the outlook really for Islamic finance is, is very bright. Where does, where does Islamic finance and, or Islamic banking, because there was a discussion about that too, but where does Islamic banking sit today post-crisis or emerging from that crisis? Well, I think there were some very interesting lessons that Islamic institutions took away from the crisis. And the first uh, is on risk management. Really, the Islamic industry has only been around for, for a decade or so in, in, in key markets. And so the industry has not really been tested um, by sort of a huge crisis. And so this really was the first uh, 
uh, a sort of litmus, uh, litmus test. And so the key takeaways from that were the building of a much a robust, stronger risk management framework, the role of the regulator uh, in providing uh, assurances in a time of crisis, uh, the role of the management in providing corporate transparency and in ensuring uh, that the Islamic institution uh, complies uh, within the framework of its Sharia uh, conf uh, confines. Um, and also in investing in, in, in a sort of partnership-led approach. Uh, so I think post-crisis, the key takeaways for Islamic institutions will only see these institutions grow far stronger, far better, uh, and, and in much more positive light. It didn't stop the question, though, did it, about the, the, whole, the whole concept of Islamic banking. Is there such a thing? Yes, it's interesting, really. Well, if you look at Islamic banking uh, as being a form of partnership, um, then yes, there is a, a strong argument uh, that, that builds a case for Islamic uh, finance, that builds a case for a more ethical way of investments, that provides a sort of stable long-term returns uh, to both the investor um, and, 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 and the investee. And so yes, there is a very strong case for Islamic finance, especially as global markets evolve um, post-crisis.